So, another failed store. But, it's okay. We stay positive. We stay motivated. We stay happy and grateful. Because if you don't, then there's no other better option, right? So, you gotta do that. With every quote-unquote fail, there's something to learn about. And that's what I'm going to go through right now. So, I'm reading this book by Peter Hollins, and he explains how one of the main reasons to learn is you take a situation that already happened and you assess it. You break it down to who, what, where, when, why this happened, how can I improve, what can I do next time, all that. So that's what we're going to do. So starting off, I want to mention that uh, my store is in the beauty gadgets niche, which is for girls. Already, that's like kind of like a block because as you can see, I am a man and I'm not a girl. So it's hard for me well, hard. It's harder for me to understand my target audience, their pain points, their desires, what they want. And one of the main reasons why it's hard is because I can't record my own videos. I would either have to mash up a bunch of videos and edit them, which we are doing, and eventually get UGC creators to record the videos for me with my new ideas or different angles. So it's not really like it is a con. It is a roadblock. But for me, the way I see it, there's pros and cons to everything. And the pro is, is that this is one of the biggest market out there. So there's a bigger pie to take a piece out of. Right. So that's the way I see it. I, I do like targeting girls. They tend to buy more stuff online. So I don't think that's really the issue of why we failed. So the thing is, so uh, to get you up to date with the numbers, we as of this recording, we have spent almost $180 on ads. One thing that I've noticed is that TikTok tends to spend basically more than 80% of the budget before I even wake up. Now, I do believe that's because, again, it's still trying to figure out how, like, who's the audience, who's the right target audience for it. But again, with these numbers and these results, even though it still hasn't fully optimized, you can still see with the early numbers that it, it didn't it wasn't going to do well. It will never do well the way we're doing it now, because look with the numbers, we spent one hundred eighty dollars. It got eighty four clicks to our website, which, by the way, is horrible. Like, it's not good at all. So, like, again, the ads did not help. But again, looking at it separately, it did kind of a shit job, but it did a job, right? It got 84 people to click on our website. The reason why we're not continuing with this method or product or whatever we decide to fix from now on is because we still got 84 people to click on our website and we did not get a single sale. So that means even if I would have gotten one, that's under a 20% conversion rate, which is very not you need to at least strive for 30. So basically, basically one purchase out of 30 people visit, three purchases around 100 visits with the 84 people that clicked on our website. We fucked up on our job and didn't convert any sales. So I strongly believe that there's a reason for that. And if you really think about it, you got these 84 people coming on your website and not one of them decided to go through the full process and why there's a reason of maybe the the website or i'm going to include website and brand kind of together so the brand didn't convince them that they're reliable trustworthy that we were worth the value of the money also that does include the product maybe the product itself wasn't good but i do think the product that we had was actually not bad Maybe it wasn't the best. Uh, I said it from the beginning. It wasn't the best, which, you know, I guess you can say could be dumb to like, why did you even start if it's not the best? I do. I do for a fact know it wasn't shit. And do know that money could be made. We just didn't make the money. The product itself is not bad. It could be better. It could be worse. And the thing is with especially at begin, um, especially with beginners, you want to strive for a product that kind of sells itself on its own, right? That you don't really need a lot of marketing or a lot of marketing knowledge because again, the product itself is so good. The offer that you give is so good. 
that you don't need to convince them. So that one thing that we can fix, we can definitely find a better product, can definitely find, you know, more of a wow factor, a product that speaks for itself, that girls need or, or need. And what I've realized is not need in like, they need it because it will solve the problem. Obviously solving a problem is, I love going by thy route because it's like, it's again, speaks in itself. It solves a problem in your life. But I've realized it's not only just girls, it's just people in general where they, they mix up the definition of need. They don't need anything, they, right? They don't, they don't need any of this. They need water, food, shelter, right? But they say need because it's like a desire of, it's so cool, it's so cute, I want to have it so bad that they put it in need, right? It's so like whenever you go on these TikToks and you go in the comments and they're like, a lot of people are like, I need this, I need this. They really don't, but obviously that's what you want to have. You have people to believe that they need it. You have all these pieces of clothing, you have all these pieces of perfumes or jewelry where it's like they say, I need it. But there are so many other ones, so many other variations, so many other different brands selling different styles of the product. But that one alone is so unique to them that they say they need that one. So what I do think that what we're going to do moving forward is trying to find one, a better product and two, trying to convince the visitors to our website that we're a trustworthy brand we're a legit company we mean the best we want to be authentic but sincere but professional and all of it is conveyed in the message so there may be some tweaks on our website that we might do i might have to look into some you know high converting websites and try to see what they have done and again i know as my mentor or coach or professor said uh, from the course that i'm taking shouldn't be spending so much time on the website because you are still in the testing product phase but again the way i see it is the strategy that we're doing is we're building a website and we're going to keep that website even while we're rotating and testing products right so i do want to build a good foundation so I, I do have to do more research i have to look and think and try to come up with a, a theory that was it my website that didn't convince them enough that this is a trustworthy brand this is a good product or maybe it's just a product we don't know i have to do more research but those are the th things that i have to look into those are the things where i believe there is failure and you know what at the end of the day i realized you will never know the uh, exact answer like I, I gave you a bunch of, of potential issues the only way you will know is by actually fixing them and doing step by step so by giving you a bunch of potential issues the route that i want to go is trying to figure out which issue was it and fixing one issue at a time so if i decide that our website wasn't good enough I will keep the same product to fix the website. If I decide that it was more my product, I'll keep the same website, but fix the product and go along with that, right? So I don't want to start fixing a bunch of things at the same time, because let's say you do end up reaching your, your results and getting success. It's not good because you don't know what it was. You have a, a general idea, but you can't pinpoint which one it was. So I, I feel like I shouldn't get too ahead of myself and just try to figure out one thing at a time the way i see it is whenever you are dealt with i guess multiple issues to get the most leverage is fixing the issue that has the highest return so basically you're putting in the same amount of work you're fixing an issue just you want to fix you want to be smart with it and fix an issue that you believe that will bring out the most outcome it won't come easy nothing in life comes easy don't get discouraged. Again, I know um, I try to remind myself that I know that I have a short time span to reach my goals. And every day or every time I see failure, I get more stressing. Am I going to hit it? We don't know till time till time tells, right? Just keep working hard and we'll see. And even if you don't hit your goal, there's a learning process to that. I hope you can take my failures and my lessons that I've done with my store 
and try to implement it on your life, your stores, your businesses. Like I've said before, everyone's life is very complex and very different. What might work for me might not work for you. But again, I'm trying to create some general knowledge, some general lessons that we can all learn from. And uh, I hope you learned from this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.